Hello and welcome to the eighth video in our Pixhawk 2.1 series. If you haven't watched any of the other videos, then I'd recommend going back and having a look at those. We talk about all the different things with Pixhawk, the new Arduplane 3.8, best practice for your first flights. So by the time you get to this video, you should be flying around and have it dialed in pretty well. Now, in this video, what we're going to talk about are two options for wireless telemetry. Now, this is one of those things where the Pixhawk 2.1, well, all the Pixhawk family really, kind of pull ahead of some of the other GPS-enabled flight controllers because the wireless telemetry available for things like this is brilliant. And the two we're going to look at today, we're going to look at the standard telemetry radios. Now, these ones came from 3DXR. I'll put a link in the description. These are pretty much plug and play versions. They're actually version twos of the original radios that were created by 3DR back in the day. And one of them plugs into the flight controller itself in telemetry port one. And the other one then plugs via the USB port underneath into your computer. And with a couple of quick settings in Mission Planner, you should be able to talk to your model over the airways. Now, there are two versions of this available. One is a 433 MHz version for people like us here in the UK, and other territories have a 915 MHz version. And the nice thing about these telemetry radios is they have a lovely, lovely long range. So you can fly a very long way and have all that information displayed in Mission Planner at a tablet or a PC by your feet or as part of your ground station. So you can see exactly where it is, where it's flying, the battery voltage, and all that goodness live as you're actually flying the mission. The other thing we're gonna talk about is something that's a little bit more funky that you may not have seen before. We've talked about those 3DR radios in a couple of other videos. This is something called Flight Deck. Uh, it's available for both the Tronus X9D and also for the QX7 as well. And what this is, is a special little cable that you buy from these guys. You plug that into telemetry port two, stick it into the smart port connector on your X series receiver that you're flying the plane with. And then you also have a Lua script that you get a license to use and you download that, stick it onto your SD card. And it's essentially like a mini mission planner that appears on the radio. And I'll show you how to set that one up too. So first of all, let's talk about how you actually plug these telemetry radios into the Pixhawk. Again, the Pixhawk 2.1 actually has two telemetry ports, telemetry one and telemetry two. If you're going to use both these systems in tandem, which you can, which is pretty cool, you can actually connect the radios into telemetry one and then use the telemetry two port for the FR Sky cable from the flight deck guys. So I'm going to install my radio here into the telemetry one port in my Pixhawk. By default, telemetry one is set up for 57600 board and it's talking Mavlink, which is the protocol that we use to have a chat with the flight controller. And then on the other end, all we need to do is start up Mission Planner and we need then to plug the USB cable into the ground side radio. Now this isn't always this straightforward. We've got other videos on the channel that show you how to go through and unpick radios that haven't been bound together. I'd always recommend if you're gonna to go to the expense of buying something like a Pixhawk, get the radios from a reputable supplier. That way they're going to come pre-configured and set up. So when you plug the radios into your computer, you'll find a new COM port will appear. In ours, here it was COM5. Change the board rate for the radios to 57600. That by default will be much, much higher, and that's for the serial connection over a USB cable. Turn it down to 57600. Don't connect, and then go into the radio tab here in the extra pieces. And then without connecting, just click on the load button to load the parameters. If it's all working, you first of all will see the parameters from the local radio populate, and then over the wireless link, you'll see the parameters populate for the remote radio too. And while it's doing this, you'll notice that the radio's local by the side of the computer, connected via that USB cable, will be flashing away, and the ones on the model will too. And that means everything is working. Once it's working, you can just go out and fly, you're good to go. You can then select COM5 and connect and actually talk to the model just like you would as if you were connected via a USB cable and you can still talk to the model even when it's a couple of miles away. Only thing you have to be careful of here is there is something called the network ID. By default, it's set to 25. 
all the radios that a ship seem to be set to 25. So if you're going to be flying with a friend who is going to be using another PicTalk with another set of radios, you might want to change that number to something else so that you're not interfering with each other. So the next funky thing we need to talk about then is Flight Deck. Now Flight Deck is something that you buy, again, uh, I've got this one from the 3DXR guys. It's a cable and a lure script. Now the cable installation itself is pretty straightforward. You just plug one end into telemetry port two. Uh, so you can run this and the telemetry radio side by side, which is pretty cool. And the other end of it goes into the smart port plug on your X series receiver. Now this is something that will support Tyrannus X9Ds and also FR Sky QX7s. So if you have one of those radios, you'll get this to work. And what you need to do is once you've got the cable installed onto your PIX hook and plugged into the telemetry 2 port and the smart port plug on your X-Series receiver. We have to open Mission Planner and go into the advanced parameters and we need to find the telemetry 2 protocol settings. Now, the reason for that is by default, the telemetry seems to be set up for Mavlink. We need to tell it that we want it to talk pass through smart port telemetry on the port that we've got this cable plugged into. Now that's telemetry 2 for us, and I've changed that protocol to be the pass-through smart port telemetry. Once you've done that, save it, and then that's all the stuff done on the PixHawk. You get a download from the Lua script from the Flight Deck guides, and in the downloads you get from those guides, there's a full instruction booklet. But very simply what you do is you copy the contents of the SD card folder into the root directory of your SD card, uh, and that gives you a load of new sounds, some new scripts and other things as well. And then there's a last little bit of setup. So pop the SD card back into your radio, fire up your radio and go into the telemetry setup. With the model powered up, go and discover your sensors. And then the next thing you need to do is go and set up your telemetry screens. Set screen one up as a script. Highlight the new script that you've just downloaded onto the SD card for the flight deck. And then you can exit out of there and then a long press on the page button will bring up those telemetry screens and start the Lua script. And there we have basically a mini mission planner running on the radio. The other really cool thing is here, I've set up the audible alarms. You also get warnings audibly. So if you're flying around, maybe you might be doing FPV or you might be just uh, struggling to kind of see what's going on. You can Battery see exactly critical. what's happening here. If I rock the plane from side to side and move it around, you can see the artificial horizon moving pretty much in real time. The update frequency is very, very quick indeed. It's showing me my battery status. It's showing me how much current's been used. It's showing me the flight mode. It's showing me the direction to home Battery arrow. Critical. All that kind of goodness is here as well. And by rotating this little button on the right hand side of the screen, I can get additional information, including the Mavlink messages too. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are looking at the PixHawk. This is one of those things that a lot of other systems don't do anywhere near this well. So you have the 3D R style radios that you can get that will give you a wireless telemetry link up to your craft, running at 57600 board, slightly slower than a USB cable, but it's like a USB cable that's miles long, so you can continue to keep contact with the vehicle as it's flying, see where it is, give it commands and fly it that way. And secondly, there's also this cool thing called Flight Deck, which if you need to buy the cable and get a license for the Lua script, and if you put them together, then if you don't want to lug a complete laptop or tablet to the field to run something like Mission Planner to use the radios, you have all of the key information right there on your Tirana screen. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.